Hi all. Uh, this week we are reviewing our lesson, uh, chapter uh, six, lesson three. What are weathering and erosion? Uh, our lesson objectives to know uh, that uh, the words, hard words like landform, weathering, and erosion. To know the different landform that we have in the crust of the earth. To differentiate chemical weathering to physical weathering. So first of all, we will discuss about Earth's surface, Earth's crust. The outer surface of Earth is a layer of rock called crust. So crust is the outermost layer of Earth. And you know that the crust cover all of the Earth. In places such as ocean, the crust is underwater. And the crust of Earth is composed of great variety of igneous, sedimentary and metamorphic rock. A landform is a natural land features on Earth's surface. Landforms can be different size and shape. Some examples you can see here a mountain, volcano, valley, plain. Of course, plains are flat landforms on high or low ground. Then you can see a canyon, island, river, ocean, lake, hill, waterfall, a bay, plateau. What do you mean by plateau? In flat landforms on high ground. Then cave, peninsula. Peninsula usually near the coast. We can see extended into water. That is peninsula. Then glaciers. These are some examples of landforms. So, uh, you know, there are two types of weathering, chemical weathering and physical weathering. First of all, chemical weathering. During chemical weathering, chemicals cause rock to change into different materials and break down. For example, rainwater mixed with the carbon dioxide in the air to form a weak acid. When it rains, the acid combines with the rock material to form a new chemical Gradually, the new chemical break down the rock. Another type of uh, weathering is physical weathering. In physical weathering, rocks are broken into smaller pieces of same kind of rock. You know that uh, the uh, physical weathering, what are the agents of physical weathering? Water, ice, wind, these all are even the living things. These all make us physical weathering. Uh, you know that water is one cause of physical weathering. Flowing water can carry particles of rock and soil and sand. The particles scrap against the large rock. The rock gradually becomes smaller and smaller. Another uh, agent is ice. Ice can also cause physical weathering. Water can seep into cracks in the rocks. If this water freezes, it forms ice. Ice in the rock takes up more space than uh, the water there so the ice can make the crack in the rock deeper so the rock may eventually split then living things also cause weathering plants can sprout into the crack in a rock as these plants and their roots get bigger they can cause the rock to split means there are two type of weathering Chemical weathering and physical weathering means breaking down of rock into smaller pieces. Now, what will happen after the rock breakdown? Yes, it will move from one place to another place. We can call this process as erosion. The process of carrying away this weathered material or weathered bits of rocks from one place to another place we can call as erosion. And uh, before and after, you can see here the picture, the water uh, erode material from one place to another. Moving water erode or carry away material uh, materials uh, from the land. As water move faster, it carry more, you know that, it carry heavier piece of rock. 
moving water can slowly carve grooves into the land as it carry a weathered material over a very long time these grooves may become a deep canyon anyway you have to understand this only the the process of carrying away weathered bit of rocks is called erosion erosion may be take place by water or wind even glaciers you know that glaciers are huge sheet of ice most glaciers move very slowly as gravity pull them down as glaciers move they wear away bits of rock and soil so we can conclude that the factor that cause erosions are water wind ice or temperature now the finally after erosion all the materials or bits of rock will lay down in one place this process is called deposition the geological process in which sediments soil and rocks are added to a landform or land mass in simply we can say that laying down of pieces of rock we can call deposition and the position here you can see as moving water slow the large pebbles in the water settle to the bottom first then the small sand sized pebbles sink finally the smallest bit of silt and clay sink to reverse deposit a large amount of material where they flow into ocean the deposited material form an area called delta you can see in this picture a sand dunes and a delta it sand dunes you know that in desert and near beaches wind moves grain of sand into a mounds called sand dunes uh, winds may uh, move a sand dunes or change its shape, size and shape the size and shape of sand dunes also depends the amount of sand and the number of plants in an area so uh, you now you know that what are weathering uh, erosion and deposition uh, additional information you will get from uh, some youtube link that we already attached here and uh, if you have any further question you can ask through your zoom classes or whatsapp or schoology or in your peers so these are the summary of our lesson i think the first question you should know what is a landform then what are type of weathering how can compare or differentiate chemical and physical weathering and what is the difference between erosion and deposition so i think it is very clear for you for more videos please See all the attached YouTube link. Thank you all.